I've been using window managers now full time, basically, for two or three years. Like, it's been quite a while. I've hopped through several of them, but I've been using a tiling window manager of some sort now since probably early 2020, maybe even 2019. It's been quite a while. And I think that over that time, I've gained a good enough experience over how a window manager is supposed to be used, right? Or at least I feel that way. Like, I feel like I'm an expert at i3, which is kind of bold to say when there are still definitely things about i3 that I don't know about. You know, I'm always learning new things, but I feel like for the most part, I've got a really good handle on how i3 window manager works. Same could be said for DWM. I know a lot about DWM, and over the course of using DWM for well over a year, I learned a lot about it. I don't know if I would consider myself an absolute expert because, you know, I couldn't go in there and fix the deepest code and whatever, but surface level, I pretty much know what you need to know in order to do stuff. The one thing, however, that I haven't been able to get, and I've actually made a video about this before when I first started using window managers, is that the hardest thing I have found with window managers is transitioning from using the mouse all the time, which is what you would do in a floating window manager or a floating desktop environment, to using the keyboard all the time. And despite having amazing key bindings, like I've spent hours over the last two or three years perfecting my key bindings. But even with that being true, I still find myself multiple times a day going to using my mouse when there is a perfectly good key binding there for me to use. And I've tried to train myself out of this, right? I've completely unplugged my mouse. I've tried to turn it upside down. Like somebody told me when I did that video before, the best way to do it is to turn your mouse upside down so that you can't actually use it. And that didn't work either. I've tried moving the mouse to the other side of the keyboard so that I actually have to like do this weird thing, you know, to try to use the mouse. Any type of hurdle I need to put in front of the mouse in order to actually not use it hasn't worked. There's something in my brain that still has me reaching for it. Like, I may find myself in that situation where I've prevented myself from using the mouse, whether turning it off or turning it upside down, but I still reach for it. You know what I mean? I still have that muscle memory where I move my hand over to where the mouse either was or is or t where it even if it's turned off, you know, and it's just, it's, it's automatic. And that's despite, like I said, trying desperately to focus as much as my attention on the keyboard as possible because it's more ergonomic, it's more efficient, it's just better, at least that's what people tell me. But I'm, but the mouse is so entrenched in my muscle memory and my brain that I've not been able to get used to not using it. And I think part of it is that there's no way, at least if you are a YouTube content creator, to cut the mouse out entirely of your workflow. You just can't. Because if you're going to edit a video, and I have to edit my videos because if I didn't, they'd be full of ums, ahs, you knows, and going throughs, you know. <laughs> and you knows, you know. <laughs> I do that all the time. And I have to cut at least some of those out, otherwise every video I have would be twice the length. And people always point out that for some sometimes there's a like a long space in between one word and the other. They think that I'm out of breath, which I'm actually not out of breath. I'm just trying to think of what the next word is supposed to be without saying um. You know what I mean? Because I used to say um all the time. I'm going to have to remember not to cut those out because those are actually part of a proper sentence. But the point is, is that if you're going to edit a video, you have to use a mouse. Like, you have to. Kaden Live does have key bindings, for sure. But dragging and dropping the timeline and clips and stuff like that is just so much easier than the key bindings in a video editor ever possibly could be. And I've tried to do as much in Kaden Live with key bindings as possible, but Kaden Live doesn't like key bindings all that much. Like, if you do custom key bindings and you make sure that they're not overlapping with any other key bindings, I still find myself getting dings in my headphones, like, every time I do, like, my cut key bind. Like, I ch change the delete clip key binding from the delete key to the letter Z. And that's because my, you know, my left hand is always on S, X, and C, because those are the key bindings that I've set up for certain things. And every time I hit Z, 
to delete the clip that I have highlighted, it dings at me. It tells me that I'm dragging something, which I'm obviously not. So it definitely has some issues there, and it's possible that I've just overlooked something or done something wrong, which is, again, always possible. But the point is, is that I fi still find myself, because of that, always reaching for the mouse to do certain things, whether it's drag and drop or add in new clips or whatever it is. So that one time during the day where I always have to use the mouse has kept the mouse kind of in my muscle memory where is if I could cut it out completely, like if I could completely take it off my desk, like have no mouse or trackball, which right now I have, I'm using the, the Elecom Huge as my mouse. If I could take that completely off my desk, and just use the keyboard for everything, I think that eventually I would finally stop reaching for it. I think. Like, I think that that's true. But because I can't, that problem of always reaching for it when I shouldn't is something that still keeps cropping up. So the best example of this is switching workspaces. So everybody knows I use workspaces like a ton. Like, I right now I have uh, six on this workspace, on this monitor, and uh, six on this monitor. So now I have 12 open and active. And sometimes, and you've probably seen me do this on videos if you watch the channel long enough, instead of using a key binding, which is, you know, super one through whatever, or alt one through whatever, to switch to the proper workspace, I'll actually take my hand off the keyboard, move it to the trackball, move the cursor all the way up to where it shows me the workspaces in, in my poly bar, and then manually switch the workspaces that way. And I do this at least once a day, like at least once a day, sometimes multiple times a day. And that's by far the least efficient way to switch workspaces. You're just not being efficient at all doing it that way. But I can't seem to help it, like no matter what. Like there, There's some kind of block in my brain that prevents me from not doing that. It's like I, I need like a shocker or something like around my neck. So every time I try to do that, like, you know, it, it zaps me. That's the way it should be. I don't know. It's, it, it's dumb. And I think that my efficiency in a tiling window manager has gone up over the last couple of years. Like, as I have gotten into it and learned more about how it's supposed to be working, I, I work better in a tiling window manager. For sure, I definitely work better in a tiling window manager. And I've tested this. I've gone back to Plasma probably half a dozen times because I like Plasma. And despite how unstable I think it, it can be sometimes, I like going in there and messing around and doing my work in it from time to time, just to kind of remember the old days when I was a KDE fanboy. And I can't be as efficient there because the windows pile on top of each other. And I have to spend a whole bunch, whole bunch of time reconfiguring the key bindings so that I can actually use some key bindings because I still want to keep some of those key bindings around, so like the quit windows and switch workspaces and stuff like that. So I know that I'm more efficient in a tiling window manager, but even that's the case, I still feel like I could be that extra more efficient if I could just get my head around not using the mouse as often as I do. So honestly, this is kind of a dumb video. I just wanted to kind of talk about this for a little while because I think that this is probably the biggest hurdle that a lot of people have when they try a tiling window manager for the first time. They expect you to use the mouse just as much as you did before when you used Gnome or Mate or Cinnamon or whatever. But you really don't, and kind of beating that habit out of you is probably the hardest thing you'll ever have to do no matter what tiling window manager you use. It's more difficult than learning how to configure it or rice it or any of those things. That muscle memory is just almost impossible, or at least it seems impossible to me, to get rid of. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon and all my other social media networks, uh, though you can find those links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. I truly do appreciate everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube, and I can't even begin to tell you how much that is true. So if you have supported me over the last year and a half, no matter whether you continue to do so or you have in the past, thank you so much for that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.